This is Sarah Wilkinson from Humber College and the University of Guelph Humber. In the second video of the Key Cardiovascular Variables series, I'm going to be discussing the regulation of heart rate. In the first video, I went through a basic definition of cardiac output, stroke volume, and heart rate. And in the next video, I'll be covering factors that affect stroke volume. Let's go through a brief overview of what this video is going to cover. I'm going to go through a few key features of heart cells. I'll discuss the conducting system of the heart. We'll then discuss the sinoatrial node, which is the pacemaker of the heart. And then I'll discuss the neural and hormonal regulation of heart rate. Heart rate is the number of times the heart pumps in one minute. Let's take a closer look at the myocardium. What you can see here is a drawing of cardiac muscle. And we're going to compare it to skeletal muscle. So what you can notice in both of these diagrams is that both skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle are striated. That means they both contain contractile proteins, such as myosin, actin, troponin, tropomyosin, so that they both contract. Both skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle contain nuclei. They both contain mitochondria, which allows them to produce ATP through oxidative phosphorylation. In contrast, only cardiac muscle engages in spontaneous depolarization. That means it can generate an action potential by itself without external control from a motor neuron. In contrast, skeletal muscle needs a motor neuron in order to depolarize. In terms of branching, you can see very clearly on the cardiac muscle cell that there's these branches. In contrast, skeletal muscle, there is no branching. This will become very important when we discuss how action potentials are conducted through the heart. A second difference between cardiac muscle and skeletal muscle is that in cardiac muscle, adjacent cells are connected. So you can see here, that through this branching, cardiac muscle cells are connected. There's little channels between the membranes of separate cardiac muscle cells. In contrast, skeletal muscle are distinctive cells. There's no sharing of plasma from one cell to another. Let's take a deeper look at these connected cardiac muscle cells. We've zoomed in on our cardiac muscle cells. And what you can see here is we've got our plasma membranes, our plasma membranes right here. And we've got connections between those plasma membranes. So here would be one cardiac muscle cell connected to another. Let's take a deeper look at this plasma membrane. Here we have our plasma membrane of one cell and our plasma membrane of another. And what you can see here is we've got something called a gap junction. What this does is it creates a channel from one cell to the other so that molecules can pass from one cell without having to pass through the plasma membrane. Here we've got molecules passing from cell one to cell two. What this allows for is an action potential generated in one cell to travel freely between cells very quickly. This is very beneficial in the heart as we want a rapid rate of depolarization from one part of the heart to another. I've illustrated this here where an action potential is developed at the top right-hand side of the heart in the right atria and travels very quickly between atria, down the ventricle, and through the myocardium. Let's take a deeper look at a group of cells we call the conducting system that allows for rapid conduction of an action potential through the heart. In the heart, there is a group of cells that spontaneously depolarize. That means they generate action potentials without external stimuli. These cells are found in very specific regions of the heart, denoted in purple. 
the sinal atrial node located in the top right atria, the atrial ventricular node located right near the atrial ventricular valve, the AV bundle divides into the left and right bundle branches, ending at the Purkinje fibers located in the myocardium, specifically the papillary muscles. These specialized groups of cells effectively conduct action potentials originating in the SA node from the top of the heart all the way into the ventricles. So let's start by looking at the SA node, which we call the pacemaker of the heart. We call it the pacemaker because it generates the fastest rate of spontaneous depolarization. The AV node, AV bundle, bundle branches, and Purkinje fibers also can spontaneously depolarize, but they don't depolarize as fast as the SA node. Hence, it sets the pace of the heart. The rate of depolarization of these cells contained within the SA node can be modified by the autonomic nervous system, as well as hormones such as epinephrine. Within this video, I'm not going to cover in depth these hormones, but I'll be looking at the autonomic nervous system. As you'll recall from a previous video where I covered the organization of the nervous system, signals are sent out from the central nervous system through one of two motor efferent divisions, the autonomic or the somatic. We'll be discussing the autonomic nervous system, which we can think about as automatic without thinking. And we'll be discussing both sympathetic and parasympathetic control of heart rate. Let's first start by discussing parasympathetic innervation of the heart. The vagus nerve innervates both the SA node and the AV node and it will be responsible for slowing down the rate of depolarization. In contrast, the sympathetic cardiac nerve innervates the SA node, AV node, as well as the myocardium. And it's going to be responsible for accelerating heart rate and increasing the contractility or the strength of the heart contraction. We can illustrate the interplay between sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions of the nervous system in controlling heart rate in this graph. If the SA node was left to its own devices, its intrinsic rate would be between 100 to 110 beats per minute with sympathetic stimulation of the SA node. This intrinsic rate is sped up. In contrast, parasympathetic activation is going to lead to a slowing down of this intrinsic rate. We can think about the interplay between the sympathetic and parasympathetic systems as a tug of war. Sometimes the sympathetic division is dominating, while other times the parasympathetic division is dominating. So to review our regulation of heart rate we've covered in this video. The heart contains cells that spontaneously depolarize. We call this the conducting system. The SA node sets the heart rate without external control. And the autonomic nervous system can alter heart rate through innervation of the SA and AV node, modifying the rate of depolarization. I didn't discuss in detail how hormones can do this, but they can do it as well. And there's a very unique structure of cardiomyocytes, which allows for very rapid conduction of these action potentials through the heart. In the next set of videos, I'll be discussing factors that affect stroke volume 